Hi, uh, four pass stock taking. Um, very important part of your business experience is to manage your stock properly. Um, I just logged into a customer yesterday that had a printer issue because uh, they deleted the printer and suddenly it, of course, uh, uh, the whole world falls apart. Not the end of the world, simply just to reinstall the printer. In any case, coming back to stock taking, stock taking, as I say, is critical. And some of our videos and websites and stuff, we refer to the scale principle. One side we've got stock, other side we've got money. Those two must balance. And if we do not control it, in all fairness, we might as well just close the business. Uh, in fact, it might be cheaper to lock the doors than to carry on trading if we think that we do not need to control it. So let's go through the, the different functionality. Um, I just finished up a warehousing video, so let's go and take again my warehouse video follow up on there. And we'll go and look at my castle can, I think was the item that I used, and I looked at my history. And I left the, the warehousing video with a stock quantity of minus five um, for warehouse number three, as you can see. My default warehouse is zero. Okay, so we want to do stock takes now. So let's go out of there and we'll go to stock take. Um, the older customers that's been using Forpos for many years will still do the snapshot stuff. Uh, and you'll see that now you don't need to do that anymore. You can just go straight into stock take adjustments. I want to go to my local beers. And in my case here, what I want to do is I want to go and do a stock take for warehouse number three, which is one of my bars, argument's sake, or my fridge or whatever the case may be. And I'm going to physically count my stock now. And I'm going to say I've got 24 Amstels in stock. Uh, I've got Black Label Quartz uh, 145 in there. Uh, burgers shouldn't be on there, so I will ignore it for now. We'll fix it up later. Castle cans. Um, I have 48 in stock, or let's make it 47. And line lager cans, I have 33 in stock, just the second argument. So obviously, you can go and print a difference, which will give us a report of what the difference is between what you uh, had before the stock take and now, so you can get an immediate shrinkage figure. Um, and obviously, follow it up with your staff and, and make sure that this doesn't happen in the future. And if it keeps on happening, then might be a possibility to say, well, I will control it myself or I'll get rid of the people using it. Somebody's uh, misusing or abusing the system. And that's the stock tech. I mean, you'll literally be able to go and do it for each and every other product. Uh, while I'm remembering and that my product is in the, my burger was in the wrong department. So let's go back to burgers and change it back again to, um, what shall we say? I think it was food items or something. Um, oh, for now, okay, well, let's leave it in burgers, sorry. And I have a stock group. Uh, sorry, the important part to change, obviously, is the stock group, not necessarily the, uh, the pricing group. The pricing group doesn't apply to stock tax. Stock tax only works on the stock group as a, uh, as a selection. All right. Um, okay, so I fixed that up now. If I go to back to stock tech now and I go and look, print my stock take uh, report current stock holding or current stock value all right so once i've captured the stock if i want to go and see what the stock value is at any given time i can just go and load my reports or even look under stock takes uh, you've got stock holding and stock value reports over there as well um, for sake of this demo i'm just going to quickly go through a reporting sales dashboard uh, menu sorry and go and do a stock uh, report stock value detail report it will ask me do you want a consolidated figure or a detail so let's select the detail so we can get some better insight in there and you can see now that my local beers over here uh, my castle cans uh, i typed in 47 and those are the numbers that i entered it earlier and as my physical stock um, you could go further to go and balance your stock again i can go to reporting analytical stock movement detail and I can go and look at my castle can for warehouse number three once again and uh, go and see that my opening stock was zero for that one. Uh, this is at the beginning of the day. Obviously, earlier when we looked was part of my day end. So I, as you can see there, I sold some items earlier in the day, five items, and then I did a shrinkage. And the shrinkage is now showing as a negative shrinking, meaning that it became more. Okay, and it shows 52 shrinkage, which is the difference between uh, what the system had at the time at that second 
and what the, the quantity is right now. So although I physically captured 47, the shrinkage quantity would then be the difference. In other words, 40, sorry, 52 negative, meaning more than. Okay, hope it makes sense. Um, that really is stock taking. Uh, there's not much more to say about stock taking other than you've got to do it every day or do it as often as you can. All right, if it's uh, not possible every day, do sections. There's other ways of doing stock takes. Uh, let me go through those options again. Uh, I'm sure you picked up that we have an option for Android uh, systems. Uh, Android meaning that you can run it off your telephone uh, or your smart device, for, uh, Android device. You can do a stock take on there. You can scan the product, type in the quantities, and then physically just come bring it back in. Once you've done that, you can then go and do a, a import stock take from that Android file that you've selected. Um, so if you do that, that option, it will ask you where the file is that you just stored, where did you copy it from, from your Android device. And once you've done that, the stock will be updated automatically as well. Uh, sorry, not automatically. You'll go to stock take. If you then go into stock take adjustments, you'll see that your handheld file will appear on this list. So that's the second option. Third option is that you'll be able to go and do a um, uh, a stock take. Uh, sorry, under utilities, you've got a stock take utility. And again, you, you can go and specify the warehouse and then you can physically go and scan the barcode in there and type it in. Uh, one of our older customers are using it in his store quite successfully so they they you would use a, a wireless scanner physically walk down the shelf uh, and scan the item and the uh, lady that's standing at the point of sale will enter the quantity that they shout out so it's a very quick way of doing it the third option that we have for stock taking is something we developed for a customer that uses a, a stock taking a company that does stock takes for him um, and that does uh, an export stock CSV file. It creates a little file for them, which will give them a stock value at that time in the in the system. So what they will then do is physically go and count the stock, and the system will then say, fine, this is what the stock was at that second. This is what you've entered, and therefore the usage or the, the difference is an amount, and it will automatically calculate that and import, allow you to import that as well. Um, so those are there's a couple of different ways. Um, Again, it doesn't really matter which, which option you use um, as long as you actually start doing stock takes. And don't start off and say, I'm going to do 10,000 products. It's not physical possible. Go and do small sections. Um, as I suggested to the same customer yesterday, go and do your beers. And they've got a restaurant, beers and bottle of wines and things like that. Many, many years ago, a friend and a customer of mine um, set up his whole business to effectively run off five products. And you would say, but how's that possible? Well, he grouped all the cold drinks together. He all made it one item, okay, in terms of stock control. So he didn't have, although he had a can of Fanta and Coke and everything else that is a sales product, he had bullet materials of all of those items to link back to the original item called cold drink can. So all his purchases went to cold drink can. His sales would go into individual products so he can print the bill properly, but he would still count it back in there. And what he was interested in to know is, am I losing cold drink cans? Because that would identify that he's got a problem and where, what to address. And what he did with the rest of the business, I mean, the seafood items, for instance, he did everything together, prawns, calamari, whatever seafood uh, he had, where it was weighed in kilogram, all with bill of materials linked to a seafood product. The same with the wines. It didn't matter to him whether he was losing a, a Bellingham or a Tattinger or a whatever product um, as well, as long as you knew that I'm, I lost a bottle of wine. And if we would then charge the, the staff for the most expensive bottle of wine, it didn't really matter. Again, we will stop uh, the process of stealing all the losses. Uh, and again, that's the 90% of the problem. If you allow your staff to know that you are not doing stock control, then it will run away from you. Okay, so they're not allowed to be able to get away with murder, whether that's stealing oil down the drain that they pour and catch on the outside or meat products or whatever the case may be. There's got to be controls in place, okay? Any and all businesses needs controls. And you might say, yeah, but you know, I do all the buying, I do all the selling, I do, I do. Yes, but you also have people working in the business and they will find ways of making sure that the stock disappears. And stock is money. Very simply put, would you leave your wallet on the on the shelf in the fridge? And the answer is no, you won't. 
Okay, so if they can st will steal your wallet or the contents of your wallet, obviously they'll steal your stock and they will resell it or use it for themselves. The long and the short of it, it is your money that you're losing. That's stock taking. Enjoy.